Okay, so it must be 1 p.m. in New York because we are here again in another session of Ask the Expert, both broadcasted through my Facebook, but uh, also here in the Zoom with all of you, my very good friends following me every other week where we have this 30 minutes to talk about new things that my heritage is bringing and more important than that to answer your questions so uh get ready prepare your questions because today as any other day i will open your microphones for you to voice your questions but um, today, I would like to first talk about a new feature that we announced recently in Rootstech, the family tree timeline, and why I think it is a great feature. Uh, in the meantime, of course, that you can start writing your hellos and your comments on the chat, uh, but preferably leave the questions for um, microphones open at the end and if you have not recognized the face the voice or you're here for the first time my name is Daniel Horowitz and I have been dedicated to genealogy since 1986 I'm involved in several crowdsourced digitization and transcription projects I volunteer my time for the Israel Genealogy Research Association and I work at MyHeritage uh, happily ever after since 2006, liaising with genealogy societies, bloggers, and media, and more important, attending and lecturing in conferences all over the world. And I'm extremely happy because I finally have an in-person conference around the corner yes um, i'm gonna be in ohio please god and right after that i plan to be also in sacramento for the ngs conference so if you're gonna be there please uh mark your calendars and pass through our booth and say hi i would love to say hello to you in person Actually, I need to check if we will be able to do the Ask the Expert live from there. That will be a real treat. Okay, oops, what happened here? Uh, so uh, let's go jump right straight to the website as uh, we normally do. Uh, and what you're looking at right now is the demo website, the demo family tree that I have on my heritage for all of you and probably you are already used to navigate your tree in this way so where you're going to find the timeline well it is kind of a view that we have for your family tree but we develop it and we assign it a specific tab a specific place under the family tree menu so all you need to do is to uh, put your mouse over the family tree menu on the top the uh, drop down menu will appear you go down where timeline is and then you click over there and almost immediately we will create a timeline for you and i'm saying for you because we will take uh, by default uh your default tree and your default uh in persona or individual in the tree so you have already met my alter ego daniel smith that was one of many uh that i have uh and you can see here brian jansen my uh supposedly father and my grandparents and great grandparents and you can see everybody here up to actually four generations and this is kind of a pedigree map uh but done the other way around so instead of going from left to right as a pedigree goes this goes from right to left and the reason for that is because this is based on a timeline and you have all the years 
here on the top of the screen. And you can see when a person was born and when it was uh, died. And if uh, that will be the information uh, and all this is coming and being extracted from your family tree. And that is actually a bonus for you. And I will tell you why in just one more minute. As you scroll down, you will be able to go into your maternal side and you will notice that people will get different colors. And then inside those colors, it will depend if you have already a birth and a death a information or date for the person, even only a year will be good. Or in the case that you don't know or you don't have the date on the family tree, we will simply fade the color of that area uh, to white in one of those corners. So you can see already how this is going to help you making sure your family tree is accurate and has all the information that you need. Now, if you would want straight from here to correct or to fill that information, missing information, in each uh, of one of those areas, you will have these three dots. And by clicking on the three dots, you will be able to select if you want to edit the profile of the person or view this person in a tree or view the profile or do any kind of more um, work on the tree. Also, by the way, you will notice that when the person uh, dies, we have this icon here. And if you put in a, the mouse over the icon, you will see the age of the person when it died. If the person is alive, you will simply see the age of the person at the moment. Another thing we give you related to ages is the age of the person when the son or daughter were born. So I know, for example, that Deborah right here was born when her mother, Linda, was 46. And Linda was born when his, her father, Brian, was 21. So this helps you also put things in perspective. But even more than that, because this uh, view of your family tree, and especially those connectors, are actually going to help you curate your tree. And the example that I have here, and you can see on the screen, is where Joseph Jensen actually was born in 1907, as you can see here, but it's not connected to the father. The father is this person right here. Wait, and I put the mouse over, you will notice the dates over there. And uh, the, the, you have a red dot also on that um, connector. And this is telling me that I have a consistency issue because we couldn't manage to connect uh, the parent to the uh, son in this case. Now, if you go to the parents or the father, uh, it will say that he was born in 1878 and he died in 1845. Well, uh, Yes, definitely. You agree with me that this is practically impossible. So uh, I know already that I probably made a mistake and it was 1945 and not 1845. And definitely the age uh, of connection here also tells me that something is wrong. So you can see how this view, again, it's not only a very nice way of presenting your ancestors um, tree or, or pedigree, but also to detect different mistakes that you may have in your family tree. Now, not only that, you will notice also these areas in the timeline where we have placed important worldwide events, also depending on the language and the place where you are connecting. For example, if you will be living in France, probably you will see here World War I and II, of course, but other 
uh, specific events from the French history. And this will give you a perspective. So you will know, for example, that Brian Jansen was born right after World War II. And yes, probably you will notice that you see over there that he was bo born in 45, and you may know that in 45 is when the war ended. But looking at it on this um, timeline, it's much visual and easier to understand. What else you have here? Well, I can decide how many generations I want to see this, uh, and I can go up to nine generations without a problem. Uh, you can also download uh, the view of this timeline, and by downloading it, you will get a PDF that you can later on print, or you know better if you don't print it, but you can send it by email or share it with any other person or even in social media if you want. And if you want to share, actually, we provide you a links uh, and direct uh, clicking to Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, or just the URL that you can later on use. On the settings, uh, you will be able uh, to decide if you want to display the age of the person and the years here, or you want to show historical periods, or you want to show uh, the large bars with the last li uh, lifespan right there. So uh, pretty much uh, configurable as you want uh, to see the event. Now, more important, and I know that some people are already thinking, well, this is beautiful, but uh, I'm not interested in one for me, but I will be, a, I would love to be able to create one for my cousin and then try to involve him more into genealogy. So all what you need to do is to go to the upper left corner and start writing the name, last name or given name of that person. And we will look for that name in the family tree and we will be able to say, okay, this is the person, let's create um, a, a timeline for that person. And you will see here how we do that in just a matter of seconds. Uh, timeline is totally free. Uh, so anybody can enjoy of the view and uh, it's not limited in any way of the amount of, uh, of uh, timelines that you can have. This is totally dynamic and you can go ahead and correct and create as many as you want. It, it's all for you. Now, uh, if you allow me and as I'm used to, before uh, I open your microphones, let me go over a few announcements that I have for you. One very special one that I have, uh, and I'm going to start by putting those um, uh, URLs right here on the chat, is the uh, US Census page that we have created specially for you. Uh, yes, the 1950 census, uh, right, Maria? I can see in your background, you're already there. Uh, the 1950 census is going to be released very soon. Uh, so we have created a special page to enlighten you not only about the 1950, but all the US censuses that came before. And I'm seeing here other people also celebrating already their release of the 1950s uh, census with their uh, backgrounds. Now, um, if you have no idea how a census can benefit your research, if you want to learn more how to really uh, take advantage of this, I will suggest you to visit the uh, genealogy introduction course that we have on MyHeritage, which is totally free. It does require a registration, but it's a free registration and just only to keep track of your progress on the course. Uh, and where can you find it? You can find it on the knowledge base, education.myheritage.com. Right here on the top will be the link for the genealogy course. 
the knowledge base is also free and not even a registration needed. Okay, so you just need to go there and start and joining the material, not only the course, but we have also updated the downloadable material, the articles, the uh, videos, and even webinars that we offer you there totally free. And if you are into webinars, of course, the option to watch them for free, live or recorded under Legacy Family Tree Webinars, a company that is now part of the MyHeritage family. Uh, about 1,600 webinars are already there waiting for you. And all you need to do is search for any keyword or any subject that you are interested on and start and joining the webinar. And uh, wait, wait, wait. My heritage. Uh, okay, yes. My Heritage and Legacy Family Tree webinars invite you to make history again and join us for our upcoming 24-hour genealogy webinar marathon. From April 7th to 8th, 2022, expand your genealogy ah! What happened here? Genealogy horizons broader than ever before with 24 free back-to-back -back uninterrupted lectures from the comfort of your home. To learn more and sign up, visit www.familytreewebinars.com slash 24. Yes, that's what happened when you want to show off and just bring a little bit of a change uh, into uh, what we are normally doing. But yes, uh, we have this craziness of 24 hours uh, webinars again this year. And uh, I think finally, uh, the last announcement is regarding our new podcast, the Blast From My Past podcast, where you will be able to hear the stories that my heritage was the, involved on. And you can just simply uh, hear it from uh, the um, people uh, involved and uh, uh, protagonizing this uh, protagonizing these uh, stories themselves. Uh, the second episode, The Missing Piece, is already out there. Um, and I will suggest you not only to listen it, but also to follow the podcast in whatever platform, whatever way you will normally uh, hear your podcast. Uh, because we are going to release more episodes very soon. Um, oh, yes, and definitely the invitation, two invitations I have here. One is to go into the live story and uh, start creating these video biographies uh, that are created automatically based on your family tree pictures and details, or you can just manually create the ones with the text and the pictures that you would like to have. And as always, the invitation to be here with me every other Thursday, 1 p.m. New York time, no matter where in the world you are. Uh, for me today, it's a little bit earlier than usual. It's 7.15 now, uh, but that is only because of the hour changings and the world turning. Uh, no worries, next time is going to be the regular 8 o'clock as usual. Okay, so yes, now is the perfect time to uh, open your microphones. And I see Jane already standing there in the corner with her hand up. So hi, Jane. Uh, where are you from and how we can help you? Don't forget to unmute yourself. Okay, Jane, did we lost you? Did you hit the wrong button? No, you need to click on mute. No, that's the camera. It's the other button next to the camera. There it is. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> okay. Hi, Daniel. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm doing this from my oh, phone. That's, this ah, that's why. Ah, okay. 
Okay, so in reference to the very last announcement that you have, the live story, mm -hmm. I've been playing around with it and I really, really like it. My question is, the live story created by my heritage made my grandmother 35 years old at marriage, where the census labels her at 23 years old at marriage. How do I correct that? Okay, so first let me remind everybody something I didn't say. Uh, that MyHeritage has this week a competition. So if you share your life stories in social media with a hashtag, and you can read more about this in our blog, you will be able to win very good prizes. Now, oh, uh, good. as I said, as I said, Jane, yes, uh, the information is taken from the family tree. So probably you have a birth event for your grandmother with that I'm not going to say wrong, but not accurate date. Uh, and we're just reading the facts that you have. So you can either open and edit the story uh, manually and change it over there. And, and then the video will say whatever you write. Or if, if you really want to make the family tree accurate, you can go to the family tree. You can change that fact, the date that you have over there and then recreate the life story. Okay, so I did go, I did double check my birth date and it was correct. So I need to manually go back in. And then I also added more pictures to mm -hmm. that person's um, profile, but it did not pick up the new pictures. So I manually have to do all this? Well, first I will delete the old story okay. and will recreate the new, the new story, because once it's created, it doesn't matter what you do in your tree, the story will remain over there created. Got it, got okay. it. Okay, thank you so much, thank Excellent. you. Excellent, with pleasure, thank you. Uh, Michelle, how we can help you? Hi, um, I, I know that I have a, is it a maximum amount of trees um, in the, that I can put on my heritage? No. Um, no, I have a website with about uh, 100 and something, almost 200 trees without any problem. It's, uh, are they all within one tree or are they separate? Um... No, I, I put them in separate trees because this was a community project and each family in the community build their own tree. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. I thought I could only have five. But the other thing I wanted to know is I have one tree, which is my own family tree the main mm -hmm. one because i don't know if you know I, i'm in the guild but um i have lots of birdish trees okay all not connecting but i'm hoping to connect them if you know what i mean so i have one on ancestry and one on my heritage i want to delete the one on my heritage so that i can upload upload the um the one on my on ancestry because it's got a lot more people on it okay um how do i delete the tree on my heritage so that I can upload the, the fresh tree. Very easy. And I am showing it already on my screen here. Under family trees, you will have an option that says manage trees. By the way, okay. right below the import JetCom, which is what you will need to use to Great. bring that other family tree. So under manage trees, you will see uh, all the trees that I have in this website. OK, so you can see already I have here more than a dozen, actually uh, 19 to be exact. Each of them, and in your case, it's probably only one, yeah. will have a delete option right here. OK, right under oh, the yeah. actions on the right side, you have delete. And once you click that, we will ask you if you really want to delete it, and then we will delete your tree. Now, just bear in mind, and I understand why you want to do that, and it's the right thing to do. But bear in mind that once you delete your tree and you upload a new one, all the matches are going to be generated again. So you're going to get all the smart matches and all the record matches again. That's warning number one. Warning number two, and probably more important than number one, is that if you have DNA attached to this tree, all the DNA is going to lose their connections. The kids are going to be there. The matches, the DNA matches are going to be there, 
but you're not going to be able to see the name of the person on that DNA match. So what I will suggest you is before that, uh, go to your DNA matches, make sure okay. to make note at least of the first, the names of the first one or two matches with the name of the person. Let's say that Daniel is matching Eva and uh, Brian Jansen, okay? Uh, so by knowing those two matches, you will be able later on to identify the DNA kit, and then you come to this uh, DNA, uh, manage DNA kits right here, and you will be able to reassociate the DNA kit with the right person in the family tree. Right, okay, thanks. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll work through that, and then I'll come back to you with where I get stuck, because I'm bound to get stuck on that. It yeah. sounds very involved. So one step at a time and make sure that you record your uh, list of matches for each DNA kit that you may have before you delete the tree. So when you say um, delete, uh, when you say record the uh, matches for the DNA, it won't delete anything on the delete DNA, no? It, it, delete any it matches. will only delete the name of the person. Let me see if I can risk it here. Uh, I'm going to put my DNA matches here under Brian Jansen. Um, yeah, I think I have it already zoomed enough so it will not show anybody uh, that I don't have a consent. Uh, so you see here that Brian matches Daniel. Uh, yes. As a first match and as a second match, uh, it matches Eva. Okay, so if I delete the tree, I will not be able to see here Brian Jansen's name. I'm going to see a code. And that code uh, will make impossible for you to know that this is Brian Jansen. But uh. if you write in a piece of paper that the first two matches, Daniel and Eva, belongs to Brian Jansen, whenever you see this code, you will be able to say, ah, okay, so this code should be Brian Jansen. And then you come here to DNA, you manage DNA kids, there are three dots over there, and you reassign that kid with that code as Brian Jansen in your family tree. Right. Um, the other thing I could do, I suppose, would be to upload it and change the DNA to the new tree before I delete the old tree. Would that work? That will work as well. Uh, just bear in mind that whenever you will try to associate it with Brian Jansen, you're going to have two Brian Jansons. And just make sure that below the name, you have the name of the tree. So you will be associating it to the new tree. Okay. So then okay. when I associate the Brian Jensen to the new tree, I then can unassociate it from the old tree. Does that make yes. it then into only one, yep. Brian Jensen? Yep, that will okay. probably help. Okay. Great, thanks very much. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, Connie, you're the next one. Let me see if I can answer everybody here in a fashionable time before the 30 minute mark. Um, just a question. When you go into your discoveries and they have been confirmed and there's like four or, you know, one to 10 confirms underneath it. Do you have to do anything else with it? Or what, 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 do you, what does that mean? Well, uh, when you go into your discoveries, you will be accepting first the person that we connect through the discoveries. Okay. Then we will tell you, okay, if you agree that this is the person, we can bring you up to 50 individuals. Okay. Then, then you, yes, you need to go to the bottom of that page and mm -hmm. click yes, save, accept, something like that, a big orange button. And okay. only after that, we will be copying all the information into your tree. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. That's good. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. My pleasure. Uh, Maria. Yes. What's your question today? Hi, Daniel. Um, I have a question about the live story. Can you only create one a day? <laughs> uh, no, but that's a very good secret. Okay. Like you can create as many as you want. 
Uh, but I guess uh, that you want to create more than one for the same individual? Yeah, I ran into an issue, uh, but I think I may have corrected it. I, I uh, deleted the story that was told. Okay. So, so you don't need to do that. Okay. okay. And let me tell you the secret. Uh, okay. Let me take this person here, which uh, is dead. And you see where it says here, create his life story. Yes. Okay, so you can click here and you can click this as many times as you want. Now it will create you the same story based on the whatever you have on the family tree. Uh, right. But uh, you know that, for example, I already have a, a, um, an, a life story for Joseph. If I will click on Thomas, you see this a little bit different and more uh, uh, visual. Okay, yeah. so I don't have one for Thomas. I have one for Joseph. Um, but again, you can create as many life stories as you want. Uh, what I found out people are doing actually is creating a second story and then changing some of the details over there. And then I have a, a story that will tell about the maternal side and I will tell the story about the paternal side, for example. Uh, but always also remember that you can go here to life story and just create uh, manually any a story that you want for a person. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Excellent. Uh, Ted, you are the last one, but I will answer your question. All right. It has to do with live story also. I uh, think it's a great way to uh, convey the uh, family history, family genealogy to the grandchildren and great grandchildren. But I found that I, uh, was editing a story and it said I could change the background picture. I clicked on that and it took me to my own computer's Windows uh, Explorer. It did not allow me to choose another picture within my, my heritage tree. Ah, okay. Yes, you're totally right. Uh, it's not a bug. Uh, right now, we will not allow you to choose. When you click edit photo, we will not allow you to choose a photo that you previously uploaded to MyHeritage. Uh, you can either uh, select one from your computer. Okay. And yes, this is definitely not the right folder, but it's a folder in my computer where I can just simply go and choose a picture, okay? Uh, we are hearing that uh, request and uh, I can tell you that we are preparing more and more uh, improvements to this tool. And that is one of the ones we have in our list to be able to choose a photo that was already loaded into my heritage. What I wanted to do was uh, substitute a better photo of the ancestor that I'd run through the various stages of uh, repair and colorization. Uh, the roundabout way I found to do it was to download that to my computer and then re-upload exactly. it, which seemed like a rather awkward way of doing things. Exactly, exactly. You're totally right, uh, but that is the workaround. You come here, you improve the photo, you do whatever you want, colorize, whatever, you download it to your computer and then you use it to change it on the, uh, on the story. One further aspect of, of that uh, substitution, in the individual chapters, the uh, photo goes to a small icon with a background photo. And I notice in editing, I can change or insert a background photo. Will I haven't tried it yet. Will I be able to take one that is already in my heritage or will I have that background photo there? The lady uh, behind no, the this, gentleman. These are the, the photos that you need to upload. If you change this photo, you will need to upload the photo. I won't be able to take one that I already have in my heritage. No. All right, thank you. So you need to download first the photo and then 
re-upload it. Let's call it I like that. I think that's something the uh, programmer should probably look at, but thank you for the answer. I No, no, I, I said to you, Ted, that we are looking into that. We are hearing feedbacks from the users and we want uh, for you to have the best experience possible and we are fixing uh, or improving all that based on your feedbacks. Yeah, I think live okay. story is great. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Harold and Annette, I hope uh, you will not get mad with me, but it's uh, 35 minutes past the hour. And I really, really, really want to keep this short and sweet. So please join me next week. Uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 not next week. Uh, in two weeks time, uh, when I will be back here and uh, just uh, raise your hand as soon as you come in. I promise to answer your questions first. Until then, uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, take very good care of yourself. Um, and please, 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 uh, why not do a little bit more of genealogy? Goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much and have a wonderful weekend.